panel? Close to you. Or are you guys here for the panel? Both? Just, okay, I have a couple of rules, well, actually only one, and that is you have to come closer. Because I don't use the microphone, I don't get on the stage, I like to just sit and talk. And so, uh, you guys are perfect. Uh, and I do have with me, so before you leave, uh, I have ribbons, uh, if you guys are collecting ribbons. Uh, I've got a couple of my own this year, and I have the one they give me, so make sure you get a ribbon before you leave. And I'll be more than happy to sign it as well if you like. So yeah, there we go. There we go. Come on in. Where's your ribbon? I don't have any ribbons. I haven't gotten it yet, honestly. What? I've been all over and I can't really see And that changes net. Yeah, that changes right now. <laughs> Nobody walks out of here without a ribbon. It's the way it is. how to get stay out of the booth, uh, <laughs> whatever you guys want to talk about. I've been doing this for about 30 years, maybe more. I don't even remember. Um, I don't do as much anime today. I do a lot of looping and ADR work. And what that is, is we go in and we add all of the background voices in every t television show and film that you might be seeing because they can't do any of that when they're filming uh, because the microphone picks them up. So if this, this was the scene, and I'm the star of the show, and you guys are over there talking amongst each other, and it's really evident that you're talking, then they want to put voices in those two people. So we come in later, and we're the ones that put voices in. We'll just, you know, this guy really sucks. I know, let's get out of here. And that's what they go with. Whatever the flaps, you know, look like they're saying, which is very difficult sometimes, because sometimes, a lot of times, the extras are saying nothing. They're chewing gum, and we've got to try to put words in that make it fit. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, I do a lot of sports stuff, so if you see a TV uh, on in the background, and it's a horse race or a ball game or whatever, they'll oftentimes they'll own the picture, but they won't own the voice. So we got to come back in and put the new voice in. So it's just you get there, let me see it. Okay, let's do it. You know, um, unless it's like a horse race, and then every name of a horse that I might call, I have to. It has to be cleared uh, legally. So I've got to give, put the names, because I usually write it as well. I've got to give them the names. Dandy Dan, yeah, that's good. Uh, Lucy's got a lot. Yeah, we can use that one. And you'd be surprised, uh, over the hill and down the range. No, that one's already used. We can't use that one. It'd be, it's crazy what goes in between this stuff. So that's us. That's what I do now, is I do all of that stuff. Even like a basketball game, try to call a basketball game without using names. Or a football game, without, and I've done that for two minutes, a two-minute football game. On the outside, you know, it's gonna, and you can't use a name, because you want to use a name, but you can't use a name, wow. because it's not clear. But that's the kind of stuff that I do now, uh, mostly. That's what I do kind of like my everyday job now, and I love it. It's awesome. We laugh a lot, and move off a lot, and it's just the best. So, uh, anybody particular have anything before we get close? Because we're only here for an hour, and I want to get to you guys first, if you thinking about something, uh, question about anything, uh, ask away, otherwise I'm just going to start rambling. Yes. What's your favorite thing about voice acting? Uh, that, that, I don't ever, you know, it's funny, because I heard this, I guess it was in our panel earlier today, uh, in the group panel, I don't know if you guys were there, somebody said something, they got to talking about, yeah, it's hard to go on vacation because you lose a job here, and you, you can't go out, you can't get off, and because you're going to lose work. You know, I tell, I, I don't go on vacations because I love what I do so much. I don't need to go on a vacation. I, I really, there's, there's very few jobs, and I've done a few shows that I don't look forward to going to. Uh, but most of them, I look forward to seeing my friends. I look forward to laughing. I look forward to making people laugh. And I just love what I do. So that's my favorite thing. Um, and also, uh, when we get a chance to actually really do something, when the creators say, hey, listen, we really need 
can you come up with something, Skip, that will make this in the background, you'll make this sell, or we, or this is really great. There's a game playing, the guys are playing a game in the background. This is happening more than once. Hey, Skip, uh, can you put a voice in this game that's playing in the background? Uh, yeah, because that's my game. I did that game. That is me. So no problem, you know. And it's it's just one of those things, you know. Like over they the don't own your voice or anything. Huh? They don't like. Own they don't. Your voice, so you can just. I but they and they don't know it was me. And so I'll say, yeah, that's actually me. Really cool. Dude, are you serious? I said, yeah. Does that happen often? It's it's happened more times than you would think, especially. I didn't even think it would happen once. Yeah, it's happened a couple times with the Medal of Honor games. Uh, you oh. know, where I'd see a casino going, and I'm looking at it going, I think I did that. Or maybe I just play it. And because I play them, and then I'm like, no, I didn't play it. I did that game. Uh, and so we do that kind of stuff. You know, that's my fun thing. That's that's what I love about it. I don't. My I always say to people, my worst day is better than most people's best day. It's just that much fun. It's it's hard to get into. It's hard to stay into. And but if you want to do it, you're willing to do it, and and put in the time, you'll do it. I most of my career, or that first half of my career, I pounded nails. I uh, catered. I uh, taught. I did whatever I had to do to pay the bills while at the same time going on auditions. And this is when I was doing more on-camera stuff, a lot of commercials, uh, television shows, that type of thing. And you get one out of every 30 that you go on. That's 29 times somebody's saying, sorry dude, not, you're not right for it. So you go back to pounded nails or doing whatever you do to make a dollar. You know. Now I don't have to do that so much when this is really, yeah, great, it's awesome. And that's what I love the most. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, so for anime, when it comes to like the voice acting, they don't often do group plays. Uh, it's more cartoons that do that. Yeah. Uh, are there any anime shows you've done that you think it would have been fun to do a group play on? Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, you know, well, especially Naruto. There were several times that I would have loved to have had Rock Lee there going yeah. back and forth. You know? I mean, let me tell you something. You know, behind the scenes, I think that's what this panel is supposed to be, or when the camera's <laughs> off, or whatever. I will tell you something, it gets pretty rude at times. You just start going off, especially with my guy and Rock Lee. There were times where we just like, I can't help it, you know? And you say things just, you don't let them know you're going to say it, uh, but you, you're looking at the scene going, oh, this is just not nice. And so then you think, you know, okay. And then they, the beats come, and you say the line, and you see the people in the booth, ah! <laughs> you know? And that's what's fun about my job, is doing stuff like that, you know, messing with the other crew. And, but those would be fun times because Naruto had so many great characters, oh, yeah. you know. Uh, uh, I think something like Cowboy Bebop, probably not so much just because it was so intense, although it would have been cool to do a couple of those scenes yeah. back and forth just like live action with Steve. That would have been fun. Yeah. Uh, and you would probably got two different performances for me anyway. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, I kind of miss that and I miss seeing those guys because you never see them. Oh, yeah. I never see them, you know. Uh, uh, maybe once in a while crossing because I would have. That's the other one. I would have loved to have done some scenes with Kakashi, you know, because of the relationship between the two. You know, I would have loved to just once got in his face, Kakashi. You know, just get that right in his face. You know. Um, so yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. What makes you like not look forward to going to a show? Uh, I will tell you. Uh, when it, well, I did a show, I, we just finished the last episode a few weeks ago. Love the people working there, loved it, but it was technically just a difficult show. It's called Mr. Robot, and we we had so much to do on that show that, and I had so much research to do on that show that when I left or before getting in, I'm on the computer for three hours just trying to find what this FBI guy would say. Because that's what we, in that world, we do all of the, the writing, it's all improv. But you need to improv stuff that would be said in that scene. So I, I wish I would have brought my iPad. I have just file after file after file, hundreds of them. What would a logger say here? What would a, a FBI in this situation? So sometimes, if it's a really heavy show, it's just, I'm not looking forward to this because I'm very, uh, I'm kind of a uh, perfectionist when it comes to that. I want to do the right thing. I want to do what's right. And so I get a little geared up. Oh, I have one. Thank you. Uh, so that makes, and that show was just, we went long hours. Um, I did another show that I talked about earlier today called Dominion. 
Uh, it was a show on sci-fi. And it, um, there were, I think, three languages that we had to learn. Uh, and not, not, they were not real languages. They were made up languages. And you had to like know it. You had to know it, you know. Now, when I say know it, you had to have a lot of the words because we're in the background. So it didn't have to be exact, but you, it had to sound right. But and it's still kind of improv. You are improv. That's the whole thing. But you're, it's like we would get file after file after file of a line that says, uh, you know, "Don't take that. It's poison." But it would be not to you, not to day. You know, and now the other alien group, or the other group, not alien, because that was a different show. The other group, the other demon show, would say, Nina Tayala. And they had totally different pronunciations and stuff. So it's like, okay, what demon is this? Oh, it's the Nata one. Okay. And then you say it with those. This one is the Mariala. Okay. That one I did not look forward to going to because they wanted it right and it was very difficult, you know, especially when you're getting the lines the night before. Where they would change them, and you got to get them in your head. Um, that was a little difficult. And then we did the same exact thing, but it wasn't demons; it was aliens. Uh, and we had three different alien languages. And you'd just go there, and you'd be exhausted at the end of it. Okay, which which one am I? This is a casting one. This was for a show called Defiance. Yes, I love yeah, that, show. that was a great show. Wow. I loved working on it. And I tell you something: we had some great times. Uh, in fact, I even we made up a shirt. It, it was said uh, Wazala, because that was a big line of me. Wazala, and that's how we, all the actors. Whenever we'd show up to work, we'd walk in. Wazala, Wazala, and we we did a fourteen we did a fourteen hour session one night because the show was so long. And by the end of the night, we were all doing or three of us anyway. We were all doing impressions, and so it's like. Wazala, that's your go, wow. And just the next guy would do Johnny Carson. The next, and it was, we laughed so hard that it was just like, it was just craziness. Another thing, why I like this, what I do so well, because we goof off so much and had such a good time. But that was a great show. I hated to see that one go. And you know, coincidentally, is that right? Okay, close enough. Uh, I actually auditioned and got a part in the game. Uh, of Defiance. It was so weird because I was doing the show, I went to audition, got a part in the game, and this was a show, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but they were trying to do a game and a show at the same time, and it would mirror each other. So the show would go along with, or the game would go with the show at week to week, and it just didn't work out. They weren't quite ready for what they were trying to do yet. Yeah? Um, what's your favorite type of life? trope or type of character that you would voice? Like, do you have a favorite? Like, uh, you know? Well, happy character. Yeah, you can tell from my energy that I do love, uh, say, get out there. I love, I absolutely love God because uh, he was so goofy. And yet, at the same time, you know, he had moments that were so wonderful. Uh, so you did his dub, like, throughout the whole... Guy Sensei? Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, and that was a lot of fun. He was my... He's probably my favorite character in that direction. Mm -hmm. And then when you go the other way, it's of course vicious because he was the opposite of that. You know, he probably was also fun also. so evil. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, a little more, a little harder to do because that voice quality to get down there the whole time. Yeah. You know, and stay there. Um, uh, Mary Elizabeth, uh, she directed that, and Mary was constantly ah, let's get out of the range there, Skip. Let's do it again. You know, keep keep it down, keep growling, keep it down. Because I have a tendency to come up in here and that wasn't right, it was going, you know. Can I have to attack on the second question? You know, so like how you're saying you had to learn these different languages and like, you know, you do different voices for these different characters. Does that ever, does that ever affect like uh, your voice? Would it ever like kind of screw you up? No, what screws you up, and I said this earlier in one of the other panels, is when you're doing like in Dominion, it was all demon characters. So they were all in here. And we had a guy that was running the show who was great, he was terrific, but he was kind of new. So he was wanting us to do each character twice, each demon twice. Okay. So you would do the line, uh, actually I was doing it three times, because the, what he was doing is he would take the three voices that I did and then put them all together for the, for the demon. So it would go from, if I'm going to say, uh, the watch is, let, let me make up a line, the watch is over, we must go now. All right. So it would go, the watch is over, we must go now. Then it would go, the watch is over, we must go now. And then the hardest one would, the watch is 
yourself. And so when you do that, when you do that for two hours, when you say goodbye, it's like, see ya. You know, that's all you got left. You know, and, and it's really rough because I got a session the next morning. And, I, and, I, and I'm supposed to play a teenager. So when I get there, it's like, you know, hey, dude, what's going on? Like, uh, Skip, we need a little younger. I know. You know? And I, and I, and yeah. They're asking a lot. And I've had, I've had a session, I think it was a Naruto session. No, it couldn't have been. Uh, yeah, maybe it was, where I did a session the day before. It was really voice, hard on the voice. I got the session and we had canceled it. Uh, because I tried, I cut in the woods, and it sucked. It's the only time that's ever happened, one time. And I, all I could do was apologize because I just couldn't get the guy's voice out there. And it kept, you know, it was like, you know, come on, rock! You know? And was like, oh, know. Let me try that again. <laughs> and it was like, sorry, dude, I don't have it. So, yeah, so that, that's pretty killer on the voice. Or any type of uh, military screaming and yelling. Obviously, they're like they're saying nothing or whatever, but have you ever seen them like you have no idea what to put there because they're like, oh, it's really like, oh, you have no idea. <laughs> you're like, I don't know. You, we, <laughs> I tell you, the worst is you're you're doing a scene and the and the principals are like, you just answer me when just say something when I when I say it. So what are you doing on there? Oh, I'm going to the mall. Oh, you going to the mall? Yeah. Cool. Um, you see Jeff over <laughs> there? Uh, no, last time I saw him was about here. Oh yeah. Now, what we're doing down here, you got two extras behind them going, I don't even know, and they're just doing all this stuff, and it's like, what do you want me to put there? You know, I can't put anything in that person's voice that's going to sound right and not vary the two principles, and that comes down to people that are controlling the extras on the set. It's like, guys, did you not see what was happening? And we've had some wonderful things happen. We had one, and I'm not kidding you, this is exactly what happened. The, where there's a, so just grab this to this couple. They're walking down the hallway, and uh, just it's, it's legal, so just it's all courtroom, you know, so whatever. I'm like, okay, great, I got it. I don't even see it. We're ready. So uh, we're walking down, and it's like, you know, well, you're going to probably want to file that in the clerk's office. And then they turn, and there's a door here, and you see them doing this <laughs> at the door. <laughs> and after they did, I'm like, what do you want me to put in there? <laughs> and so, of course, we started cracking jokes, you know, hello, hello, the door, you know. And what it was is, the principals were walking this way, and they had they were told to clear the principals, but they had nowhere to go. Oh. And the camera, it, it was wide enough open that you could still see them. So you just saw these two extras just doing this. And we, we laughed for 10 minutes, of course. Another part that I love about my job. Uh, so yeah, sometimes it's like, I don't know what to put in that person's voice. They're, they're way out here for the scene, or they're talking so fast, and so nonstop, and you're making it up as you go. Yeah. And so when you hit it, you're a genius. And when you don't, okay, Skip, so can we do it again? Yeah. <laughs> you look at it one more time. You know, watermelons are really plump around the brain. Huh? I think that's what it's, you know, it's like, it's just silly stuff. How, how do you just deal with that pressure? Just because you've been doing it for so long? Because I've been doing it so long. That's you just, insane. you know, what you have to do is you have to realize, like, a, a lot of it is, it's what I do, and the guy that's telling me to do it, I know can't do it. Yeah. So it's like, you want to come in and do it better, you can come on in, you know? And it's like, I just have to look at it again. And a lot, you know, I just, I was just in here with Tony Oliver, for those of you who are here. What he was saying was just awesome. Because a lot of the stuff he was saying, it's just, I'm going, yeah, man, that's, that, yeah, that's right, exactly. And one, people talk too fast. And two, you forget to breathe. And you just have to have that confidence in yourself that it's like, well, let me do it again. And not be afraid to mess up. It's, it's not a big deal to screw it up, you know, and go again. We look at it, if it's a really difficult one, we look at it several times. Even in anime, you know, I've got, I've got the script in front of me, but I'm like, I'm looking at it, I'm looking at the script, I say, there's no way I'm going to get that in that guy's mouth. What do you want me to do here? And then they'll start handing it on, well, let's take this out, okay. And then we start working together, what if I put this in here, and we just re kind of rewrite it as we go to make it fit, because... The poor writers sometimes are writing, that their, their schedules are so tight that they miss a few things or they try to put too much, because you've got to get the meaning of what the Japanese want in it, yeah. but it's like, I can't get that in here. I can't, 
especially for if you're playing a character that's established, like Guy Sensei. Guy Sensei has a definite cadence to his voice. Well, I tell you, kids, there's no way, no how. And I can't say that. Well, I tell you, kids, there's no way, no how. I can't do that. You know, because it's like, that doesn't sound like Guy. And it's not that I, I and I do care. But it's you guys that will say, oh no, there's no way he would have said that right there. Because they'll say, don't write dialogue sometimes. I'm like, that's not a word he would use. I'm not trying to be difficult, but I'm trying to stay true to the fans that really know this stuff, forwards and backwards. And I can't possibly say that. And then go to a con and say, you know, in episode 321, <laughs> About halfway through it, I think it was at the 321 mark. You said, you know, because that's how good the fans are, you know. And I've had that happen. And I'm like, I don't know, kids. Sit down. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. Uh, my first con I ever went to was Anime Expo in LA, and that happened to me. I was on a uh, Naruto panel, and this kid got up to the microphone. Ah, uh, yeah. Episode 194. <laughs> <laughs> you had a line, it, it went like that, and he, he quoted it, and, and I'm like, uh huh. <laughs> and I, literally, I wasn't ready for it. And you actually should have said this. Absolutely, you're right. Uh, I don't know what else to say. You got me. I had no idea. What year? Huh? What year? Oh my gosh, this was the first year of Naruto, I think. Or so. No way. Yeah, oh, second year of Naruto. Oh, yeah. We did a panel there. <laughs> Five, four. Oh, oh wow. I don't know. Yeah. Seven. My first day actually was two thousand eleven. So. Huh? My first day actually was two thousand eleven. So. Yeah. No, I think it was then. Uh, I I met somebody today or yesterday, and he's he's a guest. I think I don't. I'm not sure. But we sat. I sat down and I said, "You know you." And he goes, well, "I don't think so." And I said, "Well, I think I do. I don't know where, but I've met you before." And I don't know. I don't. I'm terrible. Um, but I don't. Something about you. I know you. So we're eating, and all of a sudden he's, I remember, you do? He says, yes. It was Long Beach, 2007, yes. and you were walking around, and you saw, we were a bunch of Naruto people, <laughs> and you stopped to say hello, and we did a video, and I'm going, oh my gosh, I do remember you. And it was, it was like so weird that I remember that moment, and it was really kind of cool, actually, you know? Um, but, anyway, sorry. Uh, what was I talking about? Uh, uh, the stuff trying to get people things into people's uh, mouths. Sometimes it's impossible, and sometimes they just don't play it. Uh, sometimes they just move on. We can't get in here because if it's if it's so distracting to the scene, they want to get away from it. You know, they're just like, no, don't. Just let's just not do it. Anybody else? Yeah, I remember one of the first stories you ever told here was the one about the uh, was a Coke commercial that was shot at Disneyland. Uh, but going further, you have done anything with Disney lately? Uh, yeah, I seem to think I did. Uh, what was it? I try to stay away from Disney. Uh, <laughs> they all own you. What? They all own you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, you know, maybe, no, was it, no, it wasn't Disney. It's Apple. Right now, everything is, there's so much Apple product out there. Uh, Apple did, when, well, they've done a lot more since, but when they first got in, they were trying to get into that whole market. They did 30 scripted shows in like two years. They were everywhere. And we did, I think, three, three or four. And uh, one of them you guys are going to, I think, love. Uh, it was probably one of my fa the favorite show I did last year. And they were really great because they allowed us, as loopers, as wall of people that normally just do background voices, they really gave me a lot of leeway to say, hey Skip, can you put something in here to make this money here or this stuff? Because it takes all, it's all around a gaming company. And it takes place inside the company that are developing these games. And it's written, written by the people from sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, and nice. I'm telling you, it is hysterical. It's, I think it's called, there were several names. And I think it's called, I want to something Quest. I want to say Vision Quest, but I don't know if that's right. I think it's Vision Quest. I'm telling you guys, it's on Apple TV, and it's, I think it comes out next month, and it is going to be one of the best Apple TV shows out there. It is so, so darn funny. Uh, it's so witty and crazy, and it, for any gamers, you'll get the jokes. Uh, oh, I have a trailer for it. Um, 
What's called the end? Vision Quest? I want to say Vision Quest. Or oh, I see on the trailer for that somewhere. I can't wait. In joke, I want to the big love letter. Yeah, it's it's funny. It's <laughs> funny stuff. Uh, but they allowed us to do a lot of stuff on it, which was really cool. I don't remember working for Disney's. I, I'm, I'm sure I have, but I don't know because the shows kind of come so fast nowadays. I actually have a little bit of trivia for you. Uh, Digimon Data Swap was licensed by Disney. That's exactly right. That's right. Um, well, you know, actually, it's funny because I think Naruto, what, Naruto ended up on yeah. Disney Channel for a yeah. while. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, right. They're buying the world. Them in Netflix and Amazon. And, uh, Huh? Yes. What is this? This is just an opinion, but I just wanted to say I feel some of the best LA voice actors end up on Digimon during some season. Oh, thanks, man. Oh, that's a, oh, that's that's really nice. a lot of really good ones. Have a cast? No set. That was a very fun show. Uh, Jeff's. Uh, oh, Jeff Seymour. Jeff Seymour. Nimoy? Nimoy. Nimoy. Uh, I was thinking of Kevin. Uh, uh, right. Yes, uh, Jeff Nimoy is one of the funniest guys in the world, and he does impressions while you're working, and <laughs> he just, I would just start laughing, and uh, he, who does he do? He does uh, um, I, Michael, uh, well no, he does an impression of uh, Michael Sorich. You guys know Michael Sorich? Yeah, Storage's yeah, I know. Word? He on Instagram. Well, he does an impression of Michael. And so all of a sudden across the mic, hey buddy, you know, and it's all like, hey buddy, and it's just like, I just start dying. <laughs> He's a funny guy, funny guy. Yeah? Have you ever worked on a show that as you're working on it, you're like, this is not going to be a good show? Yo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're like, oh, oh, you have no, no. idea. Yeah. yeah. Like, so good. Huh? Like, so good. So good. Oh yeah, it's not stressful. It's not really stressful at all. I just, I just my care level goes way down. Just get in, get out, and it's just like for the money. Yeah, it kind of is. I just want to be done. You know, there has been a show or two that I'm like, oh, this is really not what I want to do. Uh, not that it's bad. It's just not what I want to do. Tony kind of hinted to it, and I thought it was wonderful when he said, you know, if you don't want to do something, you're not comfortable doing it. Don't do it. You know, just walk away. Uh, and you, you have the right to do that, you know, wherever you are. And it, as a younger person, it's a little harder to do sometimes because it's your first thing, I'm just going to go yeah. along. Don't. Another thing will come along. And yeah. unfortunately, from a producing end, they know that. And they know they can get you to do a lot of stuff that you wouldn't want to do or normally do. And you just got to believe in yourself and say no, you know. I And, you know, it's also been said, you know, a lot of the panel states that I'll talk about, you don't often know the real show until you get there, and they just give it some code name because they don't want to get it out. And I had a, uh, an audition for a show, and I know a lot of you guys played it. It was a game, and I'm sure a lot of you guys play it and love it. And okay. just I'm going to tell you in a second. <laughs> it's not my thing, you know. I just think there's some some things in it that I would rather not be a part of. Um, and I didn't know it until I auditioned for it, and I had to call my agent and say, you know, I don't think that's for me. Uh, but thank you anyway, just because I, you know, I'm little ones that I do a lot with a lot of kids, and it was GTA, you know. And oh. just, yeah, I know. Oh, wow. oh, yeah. 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 yeah, I know. Was it like background? Uh, character? No, it was. Uh, it was a couple of uh, real characters, and it was. Uh, it was just not what I wanted to be a part of, you yeah. know. And so I chose not. And it's not a big thing for me, you know. It's like I'll do something. I'd rather do a. For me, I'd rather do a Ratchet and Clank, you know, for the little kids. Yes, I love that. Game. Me too. I still play it. Yes, that game is. I will still get that game out and play it, you know. Yeah, uh, that you ever play like Jack? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And play the, the, as a follow-up to that, like if you suddenly know that you're telling off, oh, this is gonna be not too good. Did you have any idea that Naruto was as popular as it was when you first started, or if not, when did you realize how popular? I had no idea. I didn't know nothing about it. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, Mary Elizabeth had called me and she said we're having trouble finding this character. Uh, you want to come in and audition for us? Sure. And she she gave me the, uh, the the synopsis of the characters. This is kind of the voice we're kind of looking at, but it's just not hitting it. And it, I tell you how it started out because this is how you start characters. You pull from people you might know, impressions or whatever. And Guy Sensei started with a little bit of John Wayne. Elvis Presley, and, and so these are characters you guys don't even know who it is, and Charlton Heston. 
and because they all had this thing. And so if you look at the very first episode of Naruto, you will hear him come out of the turtle. And he will say, how do I want to know? And it's got that, that garbly, marbly Elvis thing going on, you know? Yeah. Hey, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> and slowly that got less and less and less. It got more into the John Wayne, you know? Well, I tell you. And then that got chopped into Charlton Heston a little bit more. Get your filthy hands off me, you know? And then it just evolved. Um, so that's kind of, you know, when I did that, I knew it was going to be fun, but I didn't realize how big it was going to be. You know, and I'm glad it was because I I hated to see that show go just because it was. And I'm still I'm still get to go back every once in a while and do Baruto. Okay. Yeah. 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 Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You go in there for Baruto. Yeah, I've done a couple of episodes with Guy. He comes back and does okay. this or that. But uh, but I I actually took a picture uh, a selfie on the last scene of Naruto. You know, oh. the last line because uh, it was like. It was like seven years I'd been doing that show, and it was a hoot every time, you know, going in, and he's just a fun character, so you know. Um, but it's so funny if you go back and listen, because I started losing a lot of the Elvis out of him, and uh, and then as he, you know, went on, Elvis like, Sensei, that would be funny. Huh? And Elvis, like, Elvis Sensei. Yeah, that would be <laughs> Sensei. Did, did you ever throw in, like, a pilgrim when you were John Wayne. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. I did. I did. I think throw in a cup. Well, when we were doing Elvis, I always threw. Uh, thank you. You know, thank you very much. You know. And when we would do, and then occasionally there would be a, uh, you know, get your hands off of you filthy ape. You know, as uh, Charlton Heston type nice. thing. You know? But uh, yeah, that was about it. Nice. Yeah. I, I heard you, you did a voice role for Dynasty War, Warriors. I did several. His name is Lu His name is his name is Lu Swang. Yes. Is that you? Yes. Well, it is early on. Uh, I did probably I don't know how many of those. I did it for I, I about two years, maybe no longer longer than that. I did uh, Lu Shen and Sun Quan, who which is really interesting because they had a lot of scenes together. And they did it at the beginning. And yes, this is both these characters. Then all of a sudden they started appearing together. So you will see me talking to myself often, you know? And it was a little difficult because it was like, no, you're falling into the uh, Sun Quan. Oh, okay. Give me, give me a reference again. Oh, I got it, you know? And I get back into Lu Shin or whatever it was. And then on top of that, okay, Skip, before you leave, I got a couple other characters I need you to do. Okay. And then we would do those, you know. But I did that for, I think, probably about seven of the games. It was quite a few of them. And then what happened was it was it was a union thing, and I had to stop doing it. And that's when you see the breakdown go out. Hey, we need a Skip Selrick kind of sound for these characters type thing, you know. So like, when you do, like, the, the dubbing and like, the voice acting in the studio, do you, like, watch a screen? Is there, like, a yeah, yeah, it's interesting. It's changing a little bit, but it's funny. From when I started, I started with uh, Magnitude Eight, which was a small, bit, which Les and Mary Claypool are on panels. You know, uh, they're like the OGs of anime in, in America. You know, they Good just English dubbing. Yes, not the four kids dub. No, no, they they are uh, they are great, and I started with them. And when they when I started with them, I started in this little phone booth, and it was just so small, and I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, there were no beeps. It usually today you have beeps. You have you have three beeps, and it'll go beep beep beep. Talk. You're talking on the fourth beep, on the imaginary fourth beep. That's when you start, huh? Not the fifth one. No, fourth. So it's, you're gonna hear three beeps in your can. And then when that four, when you think that four beat, you get the rhythm. Then that's when you're talking. Well, they didn't have beats, so you're looking. When I started, you're looking at a script, you're looking at the screen, and you're going back and forth, and you're hoping to hit it. And and you know, you, it was great training because because I learned that way for the first couple of years. When beats came in, it was like, what are those? Oh, we put beats in. So now all you got to do is uh, really, and it was like. Holy moly, this is easy, you know? And it was like, this is cake. Because I was used to looking up, looking back, looking up, looking back, and getting that first line in my head, 
uh, in my memorize the first few words so I could look at the look at the mouth and then I say we got to go this way and then go down the script and start reading the script and then hopefully catch it and it was a little more difficult. Now it's all beats. Oh, that's so cool. And now they've changed it to where I was saying this earlier and I, I did the first one. Um, I guess about a month and a half, two months ago, for a new show on Netflix called uh, Killer Seven, and I think, oh, they I think they're changing it to Scissors Seven, from what I understand. Oh. It is a Chinese anime, oh. and okay. it's it's crazy. It's crazy awesome. It's crazy. Just, but they do a whole different system, and I didn't know that. So I get in the booth, and I'm pretty comfortable, you know. It's, You're uh, yeah. higher than that. What's that? Like I'm hired. And, you know, I auditioned for something, and they uh, they had me come in to do several voices. Okay. And I'm like, okay, guys, what are we doing? And they said, well, okay, look, we'll show it to you. They showed me the scene, and it's just this whacked out, most bizarre, crazy scene I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Be something pretty weird. It's weird. Yeah. It's funny. It's hysterical. Yeah. That's really? the NDA. Uh, I don't know if I did or not, so I'm not going to tell you too much about it. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you. Yeah. Has the NDA please come in? Uh, you. Uh, uh, so I can't tell you much about it, but what I can tell you is the way they shoot it. And what it was is they would show me the scene, and normally what happens is they show you the scene, and I'm looking at the script that's on an iPad in front of me today, the use iPads, and I'm kind of reading along to make sure it fits or to know the cadence that I need to go. And I said, okay, let's do it. And we do it. This is a little different. This one, there was no iPad, and it was in the screen, and it was done like a, um, rock a teleprompter, oh. or a rock band. Yeah, that's yeah, that was in the oh, that one. That's right. Yeah, okay, from the earlier, yeah, it's, so it's going along. That's so convenient. It, huh? It's so convenient. Well, it is and it isn't. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> if you don't play rock band, you're going, what was that? <laughs> and oh, those are, that's your dialogue, and they had, Every, there was three characters. There was, there were, we were ninjas, and they're just they're arguing and fighting with each other in a very crazy, silly way. And it's so funny. And they said, "Oh, you're you're this guy. Which guy? That guy? Which guy?" And because I, I was like, "Which one?" Well, you're purple, because they had all the dialogue in different colors. Oh. And I'm like, "Okay, is there any way we can get rid of the yellow and the green so it's, I just see purple?" And yeah, we can do that. So they took that out. So now I just got purple, but it was a very fast scene. So this thing's whipping by. Oh, no. And I'm like, okay, I need to see that a couple times. So I get it right in. And so we do it. It's just this one crazy line. And then, but, and I finish, and I'm like, oh, that was easy. But the thing's still going. And all of a sudden, there's more of them. And I'm like, oh, whoa, are, are we doing the whole scene? Yeah, that's how I like to shoot it. You know what I mean? Doing the whole scene. The whole scene. Normally, you do a loop at a time. Yeah. So if I'm doing, you know, uh, I might do, you know, well, okay, gosh, how you feeling? And then I don't do another loop for another 30 seconds, so or 10 seconds even, and so we stop, and then we uh, come down to, well, you look good. <laughs> you know, I don't have to wait. I don't do that. This one was like, you know, and I just got to go along, and it was the craziest thing I'd ever seen. It's like guitar hero yeah, it, was. it was what? It, it really was, and I had never done it before, and I'm starting to get sweaty and hot, and it's like, ooh, it's hot in here. I'm taking my jacket off, and the director's like, no, that's great, you know, keep it doing. And I'm using a voice that was a little taxing, because I didn't know what voice to do, and they said, just do something really wacky and crazy. So he's really high-pitched, and so we finish it. I said, that's great, Skip, let's do some more of that. Now you're going to do this guy. Oh, okay. And it took a couple characters to get it, but once I got it, you know, you just move it, you know. And it was a very fast-paced two-hour session. Faster than I'm used to. I'm used to doing a line. How's that one? You want another? You know, take it. This, we're done. We're closed. I'm sorry. We are so full. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, that's right. Oh, Les, come on. Come on, buddy. <laughs> This is the metal next door. I can't be bothered by This you. is the gentleman I was just talking about. Oh, yeah. And I do say gentleman loosely. Uh, oh my god! He is the OG of uh, anime in America, as far as I'm concerned. He's the guy that I did. If any of you like Ghost in the Shell, tomorrow night at 7, someone here will do Ghost in the Shell. There you go. Oh, there, I'm done screwing with your panel. Oh, 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 o
Uh, anyway, so yeah, so well, no, and even in the looping thing, we still have beeps. Okay. We have three beeps. If I'm replacing somebody's voice, I still have beeps because I do a lot of voice replacement uh, where they don't like an actor's voice for one reason or the other, or they're shooting in Vancouver, which they shoot a lot in, and the weather in Vancouver is always rainy. So there's just too much rain in the ways, and so they can't get that actor because he lives in Vancouver. So they just, we're going to replace that line with you, and we want to add a line. And because of the noise of the rain, or the noise of a generator, or the noise, of, we get a lot of. I do a lot of guys. I did a show called Once Upon a Time, uh, for the whole series of that show, and they wear a lot of leather in that show, and so constantly there was all this leather sound in the voices. So we were constantly matching and replacing voices in that show, just because of leather, you know, just very loud leather. So like, you might like, you might like record a scene or something and then you have to like voice over that? Yeah, uh, like if, when you just said, when you just said, so they might record a scene and, and they didn't like your voice, then they would come in and I'd have to put in, so they are, because uh, they want somebody really deep or high or whatever, or they want you exactly, but they can't get you, and they want to add a line at the end of it, Oh, I see. So I'm going to match your voice instead. So I'm going to listen to your voice. Have you voiced over like, like real people in like, you know, like films or whatever? Like all the time. That's great. All, all the time. time. So we're, all the time. Like they do it seamlessly, so that you can't really tell. Them. You can't. And today it's even getting more seamless because now they have the technology where I can get close to it, and I don't have to be right on anymore because it used to be I had to be spot on. Yeah. Nowadays I just have to get close to uh, whatever star you may want to think of. And then they pitch it and put it there's a piece of software now that they use. They put it through that software. Oh and it's the same thing with, uh, like, I was doing a lot of ogres in uh, Once Upon a Time. And the ogres, you know, they get ogres that can't be evil or, no, or something like that. Now I can just go, they wanted it really evil. They put it through the ogre software. <laughs> and it comes out sounding like an ogre. And uh, now let's make up a fairy. Boop! Now I sound like a fairy. And the, the software does it. So it's, it's a little scary because now basically anybody can come in. Uh, he's not available. My mom's here. You want her to come in? And do it? Yeah, let her come in and say the line. And then the software does it for him. Curious, with that show uh, that you said was nuts with the recording at Scissors 7 or Killer 7, was that a specific studio that did it differently or just a specific director? I think it was a studio. That's how the studio worked. Because I had never worked at that studio before. Great studio. I mean, from studio to studio you go in, you'll see different things. Different. Most of them are all the same, on the same page. But that one was the first time I worked there, and I think maybe that's the way. And the, as far as not doing it loop by loop, that was a director's choice. He just liked doing the whole scene. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know. Uh, but you know, when you think about it, if you're an actor on screen and you're doing a whole scene, you rehearse that whole scene. And you know the dialogue, you've memorized it, so it's not so hard. An anime or any type of voice, you haven't seen the script mm -hmm. until you get there. You don't know the words until you get there. So to say, I want to do the whole scene, okay, and you're just going as fast as you can to try to learn that script and try to do it justice and get the, the right intonation of everything, you know. Uh, so it's a little, little more of a challenge. And I asked for a couple of retakes on it, you know, because I just knew I could do it better. Uh, which is fine to do, you know, as an actor. I mean, I used to do this early on, back in the days with uh, Kevin Seaborn, who, another one of the OGs, who was just a fantastic guy. And with Kevin, uh, I would often say, this was back in Street Fighter days, uh, I would say, Kevin, I, I can do that. Now we got it. But Kevin, I don't think, now, we're moving on. <laughs> but I can, now, we move on. You know? Like when you're filming like whole scenes at a time, is that something you would do? But yeah, I, I would ask to. Or I would ask to do, uh, if I just screwed up one section, and what, what they do is they play me back in my head, and then once I hear where I want to replace, I just pop in and replace that one line. Oh, that's... Which is oftentimes what they do. You, a lot of times you'll have a chunk of dialogue, and you'll miss the sync on some of it, so what you'll do is they'll come in, skip you right on, right until two lines before the end. So just we're gonna pop in just before it, so just come in. So you'll hear that and then you just come in and do the last two lines. Have you ever had to like revoice like a big um, script? 
star. Oh yeah. <laughs> like TV uh, yeah. shows yeah. and heroes. Yeah, I've done uh, I've done a lot of uh, uh, Kevin uh, Seagal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, and a lot of times, what we end up doing, I tell you, my favorite one I've ever done was Russell Crowe. Oh my God. <laughs> because what happened was uh, Russell Crowe. Yeah. And, and he can't sing. Huh? No, he can't sing either. It's so cool. Yeah, but he's just he's got such a low low. And what happens most of the time, I'm going in and I'm doing efforts for these stars. I'm doing all their fight scenes. All their running scenes, all their break scenes, and that's what you do. You're just going to do all that. So he had a scene where he had to speak Chinese, and um, it was like okay. And so when I was there, they said, "Skip, can you? Do you think you could sound like him and do some dialogue?" I said, "Yeah, no problem." You know? Because what had happened was, funniest thing I'd ever seen. He's playing this pretty badass dude, which he does. But then when he got to the Chinese part, he walks in and he's like, you know, and this little Chinese guy comes out, you know, wah, 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 yeah, nah, yeah. and then he goes from, instead of, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. it was, meow, <laughs> and, and I'm like, what's this going, huh? And then, yeah, that's why we need to replace it. He's shooting something else in Australia or wherever, and we can't get him. You think you can... Oh, uh, I can definitely do better than that, you know. I'll get it Because, yeah, I gotta tell you, it was pretty comical uh, uh, to go from, he's such a rich, that rich voice that he has, to me meow, me It was like, went to Jerry Lewis instantly. You know? uh, so, yeah, you know, I tell you, one of the best things that ever happened to me is we were working on, um, what was it? Uh, G.I. Joe. Uh, not the last G.I. Joe, but the one before that, I think. And um, I'm trying to remember the director, uh, John, uh, is it John Blue? Blue? Oh, I can't remember. He does all these action films. And he asked me to come in and do uh, a narration for him at the beginning of the film. So skip, can you do this narration? It's just, just an attempt. I'm not going to use it, just an attempt to give us something. I said, sure. So a bunch of us that worked on the movie went to the movie, and we have this little game we play to who, who can hear who the most. And whoever gets the wins, bought, gets dinner, you know, from everybody else. So we're all getting ready to the movie, and we're sitting down, we're all comfortable. All of a sudden, the narration comes on, and it's me. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And it was just like, it was so cool. And I was like, wow, that was supposed to be a temp. I'm in the movie. You know, it was this whole thing at the beginning, narrating the story. Like, That's cool. That was kind of fun. You know? But uh, I've done a lot of guys, the different. I did uh, Michael Keaton in one of his movies for all his swearing because he swore, swore so much. And it, when it comes to that, it's usually, they don't have time. See you guys. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. They don't have time or uh, <laughs> it's very expensive. You know, it may cost $100,000 for to bring a star in to do all those replacements where it costs $1,000 when it came I was just going to ask if they ever bring in the, the actual actor. They do. It depends on how much dialogue they have to replace, you know, and, and if they're available. So many times they're not available, or so many times the movie was shot two years ago, you know, and they've moved on or, or whatever. That's not what's going on. How are we doing on time? Uh, we got 15? 15. Oh, good. Cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, well, most of the time we're coming in to replace actors for all their efforts, or one words, two words, three words. Uh, Stephen Seagal, he doesn't like to do a lot of looping, so whatever they need, we come in and, and do. And he's pretty easy to do. <laughs> I had a friend of mine that worked with him on a movie, and uh, I know her quite well, and so I just met some with her one day, and I called up, and I said, Hey, Jerry, I'm sitting on, uh, I'm thinking that maybe you can get one. Yes, Stephen! <laughs> and I had this conversation with her, and, and then I let on right the end, oh, by the way, it's me. You, you know, it was, it was awesome. It was one of my favorite moments of all That's time. Sad. Anybody else? Yeah. What's your favorite line as guy sensei? Uh, I think my favorite was um, now run, run into the sunset. <laughs> but don't mess up your hair. That was my favorite. Uh, that was pretty fun. Uh, when I read that, the first time I read it, I went, what? Yeah. Because right at the beginning, I go, what? Now run, Lee. run into the sunset. <laughs> but don't mess up your hair. <laughs> Like when you just do a line with the narration, do you get into the credits? 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, often in, in film, it depends on the on the on the studio you're working for. Warner Brothers uh, Studios, they won't they won't do ADR individually. They'll do it as a group. Like I work in a group called Simon Says, so you'll see Simon Says. Uh, I just did. Um, I just saw my name in something the other day. Uh, I think it was the Pokemon, uh, the, the the detective. Yeah, we did we did all the group on that one, and so I did see my name. That one did it a lot of times. Yeah, at the end when you see all those names in a big group, those are all the people doing the background voices, all the people screaming and yelling as they're getting poisoned, you know. Or I had to wait forever for that one. You know, it had like literally two hundred digital artists. Yo. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, that was that was huge, huge. Oh, I know. Yeah. Um. So, just um, auditions first or agency first? I don't agency first if you feel comfortable. Or oh, I tell you something. It's just such a catch twenty two thing. And today, it, I would have said if you would ask me that twenty years ago, I said, well, that's got to be an agent first. You're never going to get it any other way. Uh, today, it's different. I have a cousin. Uh, we were just talking about him earlier. I have a cut or not a cousin. Uh, a nephew, a second nephew, third cousin, I don't know what he is. But, uh, he, he, yeah, he's a relative of some sort. And he kind of followed me in my career as he was getting, as he was growing up, and he decided he wanted to do that. And uh, he reached out to me, how do you do this? And he lives in Texas. So, well, first off, there's a lot of work in Texas right now. And I don't know what he used, but he got on this forum or some sort of a casting thing, and it would say what they're looking for, and he set up a microphone at home and he just started submitting stuff, which all of you can do. Uh, a lot of it was $25 to, that's what was the pay. You know, it was a lot of student stuff or independent stuff. But all of a sudden he booked a little thing, you know, and he was so proud of himself. And that's how you kind of have to start today. And there's so much content out there to do that with, where there wasn't before, it was all mainstream content. Now you have everybody making stuff. Everybody's creating stuff in their bedroom and in their, you know, because they have the, the, the technology to do it. And they're looking for people, so they put this, I, I, re I wish I could tell you, and I should probably learn this, they, they put it out somewhere, and I, I could probably figure it out before this con is over and what they're using, but that's what he would follow and said, submit a voice of saying these lines, and he would do it. Then he would send it, I said, listen, start, because he wouldn't get anything. I said, start sending your stuff to me, dude. Let me listen to it, see what you're doing, man, because... It sounded great, but it was just not quite there yet. So I told him, I said, listen, do it again. Or always do a take with your own take. Yeah, use their dialogue, but instead of saying, um, they, they, was anybody here for Tony? Yeah. A little bit ago? When they were doing the read up here with the two kids that were doing the, the read, it was great. But what, what was missing was the, the, the kid that was doing the angry kid, um, it was it was great, but there was the, the, the breaths were gone. You know, you could be angry. I don't want you to do that. You know, but and like Tony said, internalize it. It's much more interesting. Okay, I don't want you to do that. Anymore. That's still flat. But if you, uh, I don't want you to do that. And I started telling my cousin, I said, put the breaths in there. You know, take the time, take the pauses, make it real, make it, real. Make it you, make it your own. And he did that, and he booked it. And I was like, dude, that's all you got to do. You can't just read words. You got to put the, the breaths, the efforts, whatever it is, because that's what we do. You know, instead of me saying, that's what we do, that's what we do. You know? <laughs> is that 10 minutes? Countdown, 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, why did I say? Oh, so now you, you can find these little places and submit your own stuff. And I tell you something, you don't have to have a $5,000 setup at home. I do all, most of my audition at home today. I don't go to the agency anymore. I have a $200 mic, I have some baffles, and I have a piece of software. And that's it. And I do stuff, when, when I leave a session, um, that I will always say, well, I was doing a session of a show uh, Mindy Marin is doing a new show, and it's called, I'm trying to remember the name of it, it's really cute. It's for Netflix, I think, and it's called Never Have I Ever. It's a really cute teen show, and it's awesome. And a teenager, just so you know. <laughs> and I always leave that session because I had to do this robot thing in it. 
and it was the last episode, and they wanted me to do some more robot, because this girl in the show in high school, she's made this robot, and I had to put a voice in. And so I, last time I said, listen, listen Dave, uh, if I missed anything, just call me, I'll do it at home. So I, a $200 mic, a couple of baffles, and some software, and I can do stuff, and send it in, and can still use it for broadcast. So you don't have to spend a fortune to do this, especially for auditions. I had an audition the other day for my agency, and they wanted to see me. It wasn't just a voice because they were doing motion capture. Oh. And, and they even said, you know, just do it on your phone. They don't need it to be broadcast quality. You can tape it right on your phone if you want. They just, need to move. they just want to see your face. They just want to see if it works or not, you know. Um, so don't think that you have to go crazy building yourself a studio. What you have to do is you just have to sound like you're not in a bathroom doing it. Uh, because that's what happens. You get all this echo and this reverb, and that only takes a piece of foam from Guitar Center or wherever to surround yourself or a pillow, or you go into a closet, you know, whatever, to deaden the sound. And you guys can all do these auditions and send them out. And, and then what happens is, like Tony was saying, you get a job here, you get a job there. This guy says, hey, just use this kid. He was great, you know, why don't you call him? And then all of a sudden you got people calling you, and then all of a sudden you got a reel, you present that to an agent. Agent says, yeah, man, we can use somebody like you. Absolutely. Um, let's do this. Yeah. Anybody else? I got like five minutes to burn. Do you? All right. Uh, do you remember the circumstances how you fell into doing a, the Dragon Ball GT game for PlayStation? I had no idea. I didn't even know I did that character. I had no idea, and I'm reading online, and because I'm looking for some stuff to do some uh, pictures with, and I read Dragon Ball. What? Trunks? I didn't do Trunks. And I'm trying to find it, and I apparently did Trunks in some final battle or something. And I'm like, well, that's cool. Did I do that because somebody fell out? Or I had no idea. I had I had a kid walk up to me last year, and he had a list of stuff that I did that I had no idea I did. <laughs> and I'm like, are you sure? He goes, oh yeah, you did this, and you did this in 19, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I had another kid bring a picture. He didn't have, I, I showed him pictures of what I had. I can sign any one of these. No, no, I'm not interested in any of those. Okay. And he came back with a picture that he went and had printed out. And he goes, this one I like. I go, what is that? Oh yeah, you did him. It was a no, I go, really? And he goes, yeah, you did him. Okay. <laughs> it's just, it's what it is, you know? Uh, that's so funny because that is one guy that I would have liked to have known that I did. Because he's such a popular character, I have no idea. So, that's so, so, does it ever feel kind of shitty being a voice actor when you're like, you're more known for the character that's animated or that's on the screen rather than you? No. No? Never I've passed that. that. Oh, it might have been maybe when I was 20. Yeah. But uh, now I just want to pay for my fun and my boat and my house. <laughs> you can call me anything you want to call me as long as you pay me. Very fair. Um, so I was actually going to ask you this one the autograph thing, but um, you, in the panel earlier today, you guys talked about how people are always getting replaced. You may get replaced, you may replace someone. If they or you've already recorded that part, do you still get paid? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's good. No, you get paid whether they use it or not. Okay. I get paid on big movies. I get paid to do temps for a star because they, they're, they're not ready for the star to come in and do it yet, but they want it for the cutting and the editing. They want to show it to the studio. They'll pay me to come in and sound like the star. Doesn't have to be perfect, but sound close to them to do temp lines that they're trying. And the movies have so much money. We just did the latest. Uh, What's the Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, Terminator. Terminator. We just did the latest Terminator, and we were. I probably went back on that movie. I'm guessing eight, nine times, just doing temp lines. You know, uh, we need you to do another line, and I'll walk in there. It'll take me longer to get there, do the paperwork, than it because it's just one line, two lines. Same thing with that Apple show I did. They just do these temps after temps after temps. It's fine with me, you know, and. It's just like, yeah, but I do get paid, whether you, they use it or not, I get paid. <laughs> I, I was just wondering, because I know that voice actors often say that it can be very difficult to get enough money in the industry that I guess it... Yeah, it, it can be, because depending on the contract, you know, the dummy contract's not a real big contract. 
Uh, so you don't make a lot, you don't make any residuals. There's no residuals in it. And that's, that's where actors make their money is in residuals. Uh, we couldn't survive without residuals. And that makes it really tough. I watched this thing, you guys, everybody's been talking about it. Uh, what is it on YouTube? The Battle something? Uh, death Battle. Huh? What? Death Battle. The, yeah, the death, death Battle. I didn't know anything about Death Battle. <laughs> and three people walked up to me today. Yeah, a guy since they uh, killed so-and-so. Uh, killed the whole mighty. Yeah. Now, Sorry. I just had this. <laughs> oh, spoiler alert. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was me, I guess. I always been aware of that. But, you know, what, what was funny is I just saw that on a commercial. On on uh, on on what's the uh, the Cartoon Network last night sitting in my hotel room and I saw I saw a guy and it was evil guy or whatever and it was fighting and I'm going I never did that what was that <laughs> and they're just using stuff that you know and creating it and it's like did they do that I had never heard of it before so is it normal for companies to keep like audio and music or something completely different unfortunately uh, yeah it's not supposed to be done. But unfortunately, you know, they have what's called library, and a library is nothing more than what I did on another show that the sound guy kept and put it away somewhere. It could be a, it could be nothing more than a screen, you know. But they like the screen so much that he's tucked it away, and when they don't get what they're looking for, they just throw that in there. And it's hard to prove that it was me. Oh. You know? So that's technically it is. It is. Yeah, and they do it all the time. It's just one of those things. Crediting you, yeah. The problem. Oh well, not no. What the problem is is not paying. You know, I mean, I I don't care about the credit, but I like the check. You know, I get it. You know, and they they do that a lot. The one of the worst things we like hearing is, oh, we'll just use library. Library is me two years ago. You know that you kept. Who's getting new? You know. You don't get credited. No, because if they credited me, then I could prove that it was me. Uh, and then they have to pay me. Yeah, they don't want that. Yeah. But I do have to look into this, uh, what you guys call it again? Death Fight battle. Death battle. Because I've never heard of that, and it's like, wait a minute, you know. So. The voices won't throw you off, because the guy who voiced it, my guy? Oh, so it's not stuff that they use. It's a yeah, totally like different. They hire new actors. So they hire the guy to do voice for so my guy. So it's just a really good impersonator. So many people thought it was you, and was they really had to clarify that it was some guy going, some other guy going by an alias. Well, that's good to know because I thought it was me. That guy's good. <laughs> <laughs> that son of a, he's he's making money where I should be. Uh, I'm gonna get. No, I I heard it just a blip last night. So you know, did they just steal that from somewhere? Because I don't even know this show. Yeah, he apparently went by the alias Dick Square. Dick Square? <laughs> Good luck finding it. Well, I, few, I used a few back in my day. Uh, I used, it's so funny, uh, I, I, first couple of things I used, I used Hank Wilsman. We're doing something, and it was Kevin Seymour. And Kevin says, uh, yeah, Skip, uh, what do you want to be credited in this? And they're not going to let you use Hank Will Spank. <laughs> I said, I don't know. Use whatever you want to use. I don't care. Uh, I used uh, a Henry Douglas Gray one time because we played a, a joke on a friend of mine who had just moved into a house. And we ordered all this stuff for his house that you, you know, companies, plumbing companies, painting companies. We just went down, me and a buddy, his name was Doug. My legal name is Henry. And his last name was Gray. So we called all these companies. Yeah, my name is Henry Douglas Gray. I just moved into the neighborhood. Could you come by and give me a, a bid for a paint outside? Could you come by and give me a carpet bid? We did it probably a hundred different companies. So when he moved into the house, he got his number moved. All these people were calling. Yeah, we just want to make that appointment. And then people showing up. And we thought it was the funniest thing in the world. Yeah. And, uh, and we never copped to it. And he knows it was us, but we never actually copped. So I used Henry Douglas Gray for a while. And then I have two grandkids named Jack and Aubrey, so for a long time it was Jack Aubrey, uh, which was a very cool name. I thought. Uh, Do you think that helps if you have like similar uh, birth names to other actors to have the alias? Well, I did it just because it was a union thing. Yeah. You know? uh, and it was just I just had to get around. This is when I first started out. I just wanted to work, okay. you know. Um, and a lot, most of it was non-union at that point because um, anime was so new. Yeah. Um, 
you know, they're just like, yeah, I just want to do it. So we were using, you couldn't use your real name. Okay. Um, has there been any anime work you've done that has been union? Oh yeah, most of it. Oh, really? All all of Naruto is union. Oh. Yeah, I can't. I don't do any non-union anymore. That's just that's why I don't get to do as much anime as I used to, oh. because so much of it is non-union. I can't do it. Uh, now there is a there is a, a way you can do it. You can you apply. It's called going core with the union. But I haven't done that. And I won't do that. I think it, my opinion is it weakens the union. But I don't judge anybody on that. Just work if you want to work. Do what you want to do. Uh, but that's why that's why I had to drop out of Dynasty Warrior. Uh, because it was a union thing, but uh, no, all of uh, Naruto was union. Uh, the seven, whatever I called it, Killer Seven Union. Uh, so I hear some people have like a really professional experience in a recording booth where it's like get in, say the lines, get out, and then sometimes it's super fun, super casual. What would you say has been the funnest, you know, most casual thing you've been able to record and work on? Uh, Naruto. <laughs> yeah, you can't do guy and not have fun. And they expect me to say something at some long lines and make them laugh. Uh, they, it's, it's, it's expected. In we walk out of a session, and oh, I'll, I'll tell you the funniest one is, uh, and you will hear, you'll hear Les who came in here a little bit ago, this is a big joke. Uh, I did a show uh, called uh, Armitage. It's a really old anime film, and I played a character named Ross Sullivan, and it was a, I think it was an episodic thing. They had uh, Kiefer Sullivan come in, they decided to do a movie out of it, a mainstream kind of anime movie, and they replaced the two stars, myself and one other one, and my, I was replaced with Kiefer Sullivan. So they had me come in and do some lesser characters in the movie. So right out of the gate, uh, I had a line, it was like, it's something like, I don't want it. And instead of I don't want to, I keep her Sutherland. <laughs> and, and everybody, that became, it's still today. This is 20 something years ago, 30 years ago. And even today, you will hear less, or people that from that time go, I'll be walking down the hallway, and you'll just hear this way, it's yell, keep her Sutherland. <laughs> you can walk into less, and I encourage all of you. <laughs> if you go into one of less, she, did you do that? Yeah. Yes. If you go yeah, into Les's, one of Les's things, just and he has a question and answer thing, just, I have a question. Keeper, son, and he will die. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, those, all my, I don't think, I, I've had very few, other than that last thing, that Chinese thing, all my things are pretty cash, you know. Uh, games, I've been doing games so long that I know the, I know, especially war games, I know the rhythm, I know how it's done. Let's just get in and pound it out. And the only time we don't is I have a, if I have a first-time director that I'm working with, and he happens to be a young kid. They have a tendency to want to direct a little too much, and, and I get it; it's all good. But when you're doing a lot of efforts, it's like, dude, I don't have the voice to do this nine more times. Trust me, you had it on the first one. All I'm saying is, incoming! You had it. I don't need to do it nine more times. You know, uh, I don't need to do nine more deaths. You had it. You know. <laughs> But other than that, it's just boom, 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 let's get it and go, you know. Do you ever improvise or say something they think is better? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. Uh, sometimes I just look at something and I go, that doesn't, yeah. Oh, that's cool. If you guys are cool, is anybody coming in next? Uh, it's swap meet set up, but I already just talked to him. You can go along. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, we do, you know, because sometimes, like I said earlier, if I've been doing a character for a long time, I'm just looking at this going, I would never say that. This character would never, and I'm not trying to be a jerk. You know, I'm sorry. My character would never say that. Go rewrite it. You know, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying, come on, you know he would never say that. Or, I can't say that with that cadence that he has. There's no way I could say those words and keep that guy sensei definite cadence. So, we just rewrite it, or I may come up with something you know, uh, sometimes I've said something just to be funny, and it, that's funny. We're, we're going to put that as the alt. That happened a lot in Digimon uh, uh, with Galman. Yeah, Galman. Uh, we, we, I would just, because Jeff was so fun to work with, I would say something. He goes, no, we're keeping that. You know? <laughs> let's, see if that let's see if they'll play it. I have the most real question. Can you give us a, an example of one of your favorite voices? What guys should say? Yeah. Uh, Especially when he says good gosh. <laughs> uh, can I hear it? That you just did. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's just all right here. Well, I tell you, Rock Lee, you just <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and his, his crying was always just ridiculous. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you a little laugh? cowardly lion. Do you laugh whenever you're in front of a sunset? Oh, then? what? If you're ever in front of a sunset, then do you I laugh? just start to speak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other ones that really, he was probably, and you know, Galvin from, uh, he was a little, I, I, other than the when he started morphing, he was a, sir, yes, sir, that's how they wanted, they wanted that same type of voice, you know, and especially with the, sir, yes, sir, you know? <laughs> but he was a little more growly, he got more, sir, yes, sir, you know, more of that drill sergeant type thing, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's what, yeah, uh, what's the most taxing voice? Uh, the, the thing I just did, uh, I could, I would, in fact, uh, to be quite honest with you, if they would have called me the next day and said, would you come back, I would have probably said, no, 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 I just can't. Because he was way up in there <laughs> the whole time. He was so, he was this ninja that was so crazy, and it was pretty hard on the voice. Or the, uh, the stuff I was saying earlier, where it's all broke. Uh, well, you, you know, guy is guy is way down in here, and it's all chesty and blah, yeah, yeah. Where if you're up in here, you got a day, you got a couple hours, and you're done. Yeah. You know, uh, it's pretty rough. You know. And I've damaged my voice to a certain extent, you know. Unfortunately, we I, I've had about uh, two, I'd say two weeks, almost two weeks off for the holidays. Somebody was asking about it when we went in, and I play the ukulele a lot. I, I'm constantly playing the ukulele and singing, and I actually do a live Elvis show, uh, believe it or not, where I tour, I tour and I do Elvis. And uh, so I get to the point where I can't sing anymore, and I've had to turn down Elvis gigs because like, I, I just worked on this thing, I don't have it, you know, I wish I could. And um, I notice when I have about two weeks, all of a sudden I'm hitting notes that I haven't hit for months. And I'm like, oh! My voice, it's coming back, it's like, it just heals, you know? Because it's, you do damage your voice. Especially when you're doing a lot of deaths, or, 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 or even with Guy, you know? If it was uh, a lot of big fights, then they would schedule me on a Friday. They were really gracious that way. Because they knew I was working during the week, and they said, well, do you, we'll have you come in on Friday. So don't worry about it, you know, because you're going to have a big fight. And all that <coughs> leaf hurricane, Fourth gate, you know, it's just like kill you, you know, <laughs> kill you. So, what do you do for throat care for when you go to stop talking? <laughs> it really, it really is. I yeah. just, I don't talk. Uh, there is a, an amazing uh, formula that I bought on Amazon, and I don't know what it is. And you guys got to get in here, don't you? Yeah, they got to get in there first. You have come on in. Come on, start. Right no, because they got to move everything. Start moving it. Start moving from the back. <laughs> we don't care. Uh, Sorry, yeah. No, but you're cool, bro. Uh, but, but guys, I, I want to like huddle up in a corner or something so I can give you guys some ribbons if you want to remember. Or, but uh, there's this amazing product that I wish I could remember what it is. Somebody hear me know. Throat coat like a tea. Well, throat coat's great. It's a tea. But this is more of like a syrup. And it's really good. Yeah, it's almost like a, a, a thick syrup. Huh? Um, did someone drop some ribbons? It's, uh, no, it's not black. It's kind of an like amber. And it has a, almost a fruit and a menthol taste to it. You let it go down to it real slow. And it gets you through another couple of takes. All right. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you're good. So, uh, yeah, uh, we had to set up swap meeting, so you guys can do more deciding and continue conversation. And what do you do with the swap meeting? They oh, there's stuff. Swap and meet. 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 Swap and me